very much. Good to see you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Tanya Rivero. Tonight, the Treasury Secretary is warning there will be permanent damage to the economy if the country's lockdown continues much longer. By tomorrow, all 50 states will have started loosening some restrictions more than two months after Americans were first ordered to stay home. But only two states have met White House guidelines to reopen, and experts say moving too quickly could lead to further outbreaks. Today, the head of Federal Reserve said Americans must feel comfortable returning to work, and that, he said, would take a sensible plan, including testing, treatment, and a vaccine. As we come on the air tonight, more than 91,000 Americans have been killed by the coronavirus in the U.S., and there are more than 1.5 million confirmed cases nationwide. At a cabinet meeting late today, President Trump did not back down from his decision to take hydroxychloroquine, a malaria drug the FDA has warned is not safe or effective for treating COVID-19. The president called a study showing a higher death rate among veterans who took the drug phony, saying it was, quote, a Trump enemy statement. There's a lot of news to get to tonight, and we're going to begin at the White House. CBS's Weijia Jang leads off our coverage. Weijia? Well, Tanya, we saw the president several times today, and he stood by his decision to take hydroxychloroquine all day long, stressing that it's each individual person's choice. Now, we have reached out to the White House doctor to try to get a better sense of how he and the president came to this conclusion that it would be a good idea because uh, the doctor sent out a memo yesterday and said they had conversations and ultimately came to that decision, but so far haven't gotten any more details beyond what the president has said. And we know that it's based on anecdotal experience. He has heard stories from other physicians and he truly believes that it is uh, something that will help him as a prophylactic, not as something to treat the virus because he continues to test negative. Of course, this is a political flashpoint because the FDA, as well as many other medical experts around the country, have cautioned against using the drug uh, because it could have other negative side effects, and they say you shouldn't use it at all unless you're in the hospital or at a clinic. New today, we also know that the vice president told Fox News that he is not taking it, but if his doctor recommended it, he would. And it's so important because, as we know, many people look to what the president does, and, uh, you know, they might follow his footsteps. And in this case, it's really touchy because there are two sides that are offering such different opinions, and one of those sides is being being uh, vocalized loudly by Mr. Trump. Tanya? And, and Weijia, what can you tell us about the president's trip to the Ford plant on Thursday? There was some question about whether or not he would wear a mask, as is required for everyone entering the plant. Right. It is Ford's policy for everyone, including visitors, to put on a mask to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And that was made clear in their initial statement to CBS News. But then later, uh, they added another statement to say that the White House might have a different safety policy. And they acknowledged that they can't force the president to put on a mask. He chimed in, too, and said um, he's considering it, but would not commit to putting one on. Uh, because he says he has to determine whether it's appropriate for the situation or not. How close is he to other people, for example? And this is yet another um, matter of public safety that has become political because medical experts have said people should wear masks to prevent the spread of coronavirus. But the president has said for himself, he just doesn't see it. And a big reason is because he uh, is often tested. And so he believes that because he uh, receives negative results, that he doesn't have it and doesn't have to worry about spreading it to other people. Well, we know that those tests are not perfect. And so that's why, you know, Critics say he should be wearing one, especially if he's going out in public. And I can tell you that the union that represents Ford workers has uh, issued a statement of their own to say that everyone who goes into that plant should follow the rules. And we, do, we know that the inspector general who was allegedly investigating Secretary of State Pompeo was fired recently. The president mm -hmm. was also asked about that. What is the latest that you can tell us? 
So President Trump has a long history um, with uh, inspectors general. Of course, we know that it was uh, one who thought that the whistleblower's complaint um, way back before he was impeached uh, was credible, and that's why um, it had legs and ultimately led to the president's impeachment. And so he's very sensitive about IGs and whistleblowers, and he defends his decision to listen to Secretary Pompeo, who made the recommendation to uh, remove the IG from the State Department. Now, this is not new for the president. He has removed several others um, in recent months, and, you know, he's pinning it on Secretary Pompeo, who claims he did not know that this particular IG was investigating his own behavior and whether he had, uh, you know, staffers who are on the government payroll to uh, perform domestic duties for the Pompeo family. He says he didn't know that was part of the investigation. Um, but we do know that the IG was also investigating um, an arms deal with Saudi Arabia and potential impropriety with that. But the president maintains um, that, you know, these investigations could be partisan, and he's trying to root out the possibility of that, uh, which is why he replaces them with people he considers to be more fair. We do, I want to ask you about the president's take on states who have more vigorously reopened their economies. He seems to be praising those states in particular and reserving a little bit more criticism for states that are mm -hmm. still in more of a lockdown. Is this the new political take on coronavirus? Well, the president has made it political because he has specifically called out those states as being blue states. And, you know, he has said on Twitter and in person, in fact, I asked him about this in the Rose Garden last week, why he believes that those states are taking their time um, because they're politically motivated and not for the sake of public safety. And he says, if you look at the numbers, um, they show that those states are also ready to move forward, and so they should. And he claims the reason why they are, uh, you know, taking their time is because um, of political reasons. I asked the president how he responds to criticism that his push for states to reopen is also political because he wants to grow the economy ahead of the election. And he disputes that and says that, you know, Americans want to get back to work, which is a fact. People want to get back to work, but they're worried. Um, based on our reporting from coast to coast, they're worried about whether they can do that safely. And that's why there are federal guidelines in place to help guide these states and the governors. But as you mentioned, only two states have met the criteria to be moving along at the speed that they are. And that's why there are concerns that there's going to be um, more outbreaks. And that's something that medical experts have not only said, but they've testified to uh, before lawmakers on Capitol Hill, Dr. Anthony Fauci saying, look, if you do this, there could be more outbreaks because you can't leapfrog over the guidance that has been so carefully put together. So I asked the press secretary here whether the president still believes in those federal guidelines, and she insists yes, but says at the same time, people are desperate to get back to normal and to save the economy. Um, so it's, a, it's tough because, you know, the president wants to do that, and it seems that he's going against his own experts on the medical side uh, in order to, to push. Tough time going forward for the country. Ouija, thank you so much. And sure, tonight, thanks. plans are moving ahead to reopen businesses, colleges, and summer camps, even as at least 17 states are seeing an increase in new cases. And today, we learned one of horse racing's biggest races, the Belmont Stakes, will be held next month in front of empty stands. More now from CBS's Manuel Bojorquez. Manny? Yeah. Well, we are here in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, you can see behind me, it's starting to get pretty busy here for a reopening. And for such a crowded area, we've noticed that very few pedestrians have opted to wear a face mask. That will be a concern 
for officials as more places in hard hit South Florida begin to reopen. The bigger tests as far as crowds will be Memorial Day weekend and next week when Miami and Miami Beach will allow their restaurants to reopen. We have heard from workers who say they're happy to be back and employed, but still very cautious about the chance that the virus could continue to spread. And we've seen in other states as, sta as establishments begin to reopen that even casinos are attracting lines. People are, are very desperate, it seems, to get back into their normal routines. But experts and officials, as you know, have repeated over and over how important it is to follow the social distancing guidelines or you can once again get another outbreak in some areas. Also grappling with all of this, the universities across the country. We do know that more than 12 universities have said that they will send students home before Thanksgiving in the fall semester to try to beat the flu season. And a big deal that was announced late today is that in the hardest hit city, NYU, announced that it will resume classes on campus, taking what it calls rigorous measures to ensure safety. Again, the bottom line, experts say, you cannot eliminate the risk. You're only trying to mitigate it at this point. We also got a look today at how airlines like United are starting to disinfect their airplanes, trying to prove to people that they can guarantee some degree of safety when they're up in the air again. We know that business, clearly that industry has been so hard hit. There is some encouraging news in all of this for those who are starting to get back out and around. And that is a study from South Korea that said that people who tested positive for the virus and then recovered and tested positive again, well, this new study found that they were no longer infectious. And that's giving hope to some people who would like to get society back up and running once again. But a big, a big, the, the big deal here in South Florida, of course, is after being so hard hit, and after having uh, vulnerable populations in Florida, uh, the uh, reopening, this is really just a big test and one that the governor here has said that he believes, based on the current figures, the state can do responsibly. All right. Well, Manuel Bojorque, thank you so much for that. And there's still so much more news ahead on tonight's CBS Evening News, so stay with us. We're going to take a quick break.